Hi members, I'm Gary Williams and welcome back to your Sawgrass Country Club Insider. For this month, certified personal trainer and orthokinics trained Ashley Olevitt will be walking you through three different exercises you can do anywhere, even right at home. But let's hear right now from Ashley. Hello, my name is Ashley Will Levitt. I'm one of the trainers here at Sawgrass Country Club Fitness Center, and I specialize in corrective personal training and orthokinetic training. Today, what I'm gonna go over with you is three exercises that you can do from anywhere. I'm gonna go over the proper form, the biomechanics, proper function, and modifications to fit all skill levels. The first exercise I'm gonna run through today with you guys is a squat. A squat is a great exercise because it helps recruit a lot of the large muscles in your body. The other thing that squats help with, they help stabilize your hips and even the small of your back to a certain extent. The other and the most probably important thing about a squat is it mimics a lot of everyday functional things that we do, such as going from a sit to stand position, walking, lunging, or going up steps. A couple of things you want to remember when you're doing a proper squat is to really sit back into your hips, keep the weight in your heels, and keep your shoulders relaxed. I'm going to kind of run through this for you, and then I'll show you some modifications. So turn it to the side so that you can see my spinal alignment and my hip alignment. Again, you want to sit back in your hips with the weight in your heels. What you want to focus on is not letting your knees get in front of your feet. By doing a proper squat like this, all the tension and all the load is in your hips and not in your knees. If you shift your weight from your heels into your toes, notice how my knees start to shoot forward. And that puts a lot of shearing forces into your knees, which is problematic. So again, tall posture, inhale down, sit into your hips, weight in your heels, Shoulders relaxed, and exhale, squeeze your glutes and stand up tall. To modify this, you can do it a couple different ways. If you want to make it more challenging, you can add a set of weights. You can do it with either the weights at your side or holding one at your chest. And if you need to modify to make it a little simpler, go to the back of a countertop, a bar, anything that you have that's going to be stable and won't move on you. Hold on to that countertop bar, whatever you're using, and again, inhale, sit back, really lean away from it so that you can get all that weight backwards, and again, exhale, stand up tall. And that is your squat. The second exercise I'm going to walk you guys through is a push-up. A push-up can be really intimidating to a lot of people, but it has a lot of really great benefits. Some of those benefits are it engages all of the muscle groups in your body, from your legs, your core, to your upper body. This helps promote good posture, a strong core, and an overall sense of stability and balance. So things you want to remember when you're doing a push-up. You want to keep your shoulders relaxed and your chest open. You want to keep your spine nice, neutral, and flat. And you want to keep your head in a neutral position and not try to tuck your chin or lift your head. Let's walk through a push-up. I'm going to demonstrate from my knees. Start with those arms a little bit wider than your shoulders, and again, notice my spine, how I'm not dropped to the floor with an overextended arch, or I'm not flexed up. I have a nice flat back, my head is nice and neutral, and my shoulders aren't shrugged up to my shoulders, they're nice and relaxed. We're going to inhale, lower down to the floor, as low as what feels comfortable for you. Everybody has a different range of motion. And exhale, press right back up. So inhale, try not to tuck your chin, keep it nice and neutral, and exhale, pressing up, keeping your tummy engaged. To modify that, you can do your push-up in a long position, so on your toes. That's going to make it a lot more challenging. Or if you need to make it a little bit easier with a little more stability, again, we're going to go back to that countertop bar, anything that you have that's stable. So again, hands are going to be about shoulder width apart. We're going to keep our tummy nice and engaged. And again, no extended back, no arched back. Inhale, lower down, and exhale, press it up. Inhale down, and exhale, really engage those core muscles as you lift up. And that is your push-up. Thirdly, the last exercise I'm going to cover with you is a Pilates curl. Some people refer to this as a crunch. I'm going to refer to it as a curl because that's how I was trained. One of the great things about a curl is that it engages all of your core muscles. Most people just think about core muscles being kind of your abs or those six pack abs. But really your core muscles include hip flexors, small back muscles, upper back muscles, your obliques. There's a lot of muscle groups included and we're gonna work on all of those. A strong core helps promote tall, healthy posture. 
spinal flexibility and plays a large part in your balance and stability. Some of the key things you want to remember when you're doing a curl is to keep your hips anchored on the mat, keep a neutral spine, and keep your head supported. So let's run through that. Laying down, you can do this on the floor, on a couch, really any flat surface. You don't have to get down onto the floor. So any flat surface, we're going to lay down with our knees bent, and we're going to bring our hands behind our head. What I want you to think about doing is kind of rocking those hips down into the mat so you have this little arch in the small of your back. Not an overextended arch where you can see through, but just a little neutral arch. Hands behind your head. We're going to take a deep inhale right here on the floor. We're going to exhale, tuck our chin to our chest, support our head, and curl up to the tips of our shoulder blades without letting our hips roll up. Inhale, roll it down. So again, we're going to exhale, tuck the chin to the chest, pull this rib cage down into your belly button, but without letting your hips rock up. We want to keep those hips anchored onto the floor and inhale, roll it down. That's going to be your proper curl. Modifications for this to make it more challenging is you can change your leg position. You can bring those legs into a tabletop position, a straight leg position, or up to the ceiling. It's your choice. No matter where you're working though, you want to make sure that you don't let those hips rock up and down. You want that neutral spine throughout the exercise. To make this a little simpler, you can tuck a little pillow or a little ball of some sort at the base of your spine and start in an upright position and just slowly roll back over the bolster pillow and exhale, sit up tall. That'll take a little bit of the range of motion out and give you an extra added stability that you need. Adding these three exercises to your daily routine will help benefit your overall strength, posture, balance, and stability, leading to a better quality of motion and life. If you have any additional questions for me, please feel free to contact me at auhl at sawgrasscountryclub.com and I'd be glad to answer any questions you have. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley, and I am sure the Sawgrass membership will benefit greatly from these exercises. But that's a wrap for September. It was a pleasure to help bring you these home tools with Ashley. I'm Gary Williams, and thank you for tuning in to your Sawgrass Country Club Insider this is the Sawgrass Experience.